I'd like to start with looking at uh, what America thinks about uh, glass, particularly. Looks like I'm missing. Oh, okay. What America thinks about glass, particularly how as it as it pertains to glass recycling. Um, a lot of Americans believe glass is not, most types of glass are not recyclable. You can recycle bottles, you can recycle uh, jars, but you can't recycle any other types of glass, uh, not glass cups, Pyrex, uh, plate glass, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, many Americans think uh, that even the glass placed in recycling bins is generally landfill. <clears throat> They've read a lot of articles online saying as such. Uh, back to our industry, many Americans think that window glass is certainly not recyclable. You cannot put that in a recycle bin. And then, uh, and then they're just confused because one week they have the hauler saying you can put this in, the next week they say you can't. So there's just a lot of confusion in the industry. Um, just a, a point on that. Most glass is in fact recyclable. It needs to be aggregated in large enough volumes to be um, transported to a consumer and it needs to be of high quality. But if you reach those two points, they are recyclable. Uh, glass placed in a recycling bin generally is sent to the landfill. Uh, sadly enough, roughly 60% of all glass placed in the single sort curbside recycling bins is uh, disposed of as it's the next step in the processing and sent to the landfill. So a very low true recycling rate even when glass is meant to be recycled. Uh, window glass certainly is recyclable. In fact, our whole uh, business is built around recycling, uh, not just window glass, but uh, laminated architectural glass, IGUs, et cetera. And um, the confusion can be cleared up, but we need some stability and we need some viable resources. Um, I, I'd like to take a, a, the, the presentation really is supposed to be about recycling to enhance our current existing supply chain. Uh, in the glass industry. And so I thought it'd be interesting to see what are we, uh, <clears throat> what are the raw materials that we're using to manufacture the glass in the US, uh, especially flat glass, what does that look like? So uh, we have basic ingredients, silica sand, limestone, dolomite, cell cake, soda ash. The combination of ingredients can change from manufacturer to manufacturer, but that's the basic ingredients. And so for my purposes, I, I took these percentages, which I think are really relatively close to what, uh, what we actually look at. So if we take the amount of silica sand that we uh, consume every year and the 10 million tons of flat gas we produce, we could fill 327,000 semi-trucks and trailers. Uh, that would stretch all the way from Denali National Park in Alaska down to Everglades National Park in, uh, in Florida, a distance of approximately 4,400 miles. If we add the limestone, dolomite, salt cake, uh, we're gonna add another 68,000 semi-trucks and trailers. Continuing the state park tour, we're gonna go from the Everglades Park up to the Smoky Mountain National Park in Tennessee. Um, that's another 900 miles approximately. And then we'll add in our soda ash, which will be 59,000 additional trucks and trailers. These are all lined up end to end. Uh, that's gonna uh, take us from the Smoky Mountain National Park to Niagara Falls, which is a great spot to end the tour. If you were to, in fact, to drive that same route in a vehicle doing 70 miles an hour, it would take you 87 hours to drive that same route. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the raw materials that we're consuming every year in the flat glass industry. So once the glass is, I'm sorry, I wanna back up one point. Uh, talking about glass in the US and talking to my world in particular, if you're talking, uh, the viability of recycling a material, whether that's glass or plastic or cardboard or paper. You have to have three uh, ingredients in place. You have to have a steady supply of product. You have to have a product that's a viable replacement for a raw material in the manufacturing process. So it's got to easily integrate into the manufacturer's batch of ingredients to make that next product. And then you've got to have uh, a steady consumer to consume that glass. If you don't have one of those three steps, that material is not going to be recycled. It's not economical, it's not viable, it just won't happen. So you've got to have all three of those steps in place in order to make uh, a product that can be viably recycled. And, and I guess that's part of what I'm showing you here. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of flat glass produced in the US. Now the EPA did a study, uh, not of flat glass, actually bottle glass and consumer electronics. And it looked at the number of uh, tons that was produced by uh, companies in the US in 2018 and what happened to it after it was out in the, you know, out of the factory into the public. So of that 12.25 million tons of container glass and electronics glass, uh, 
3.1 million tons was recycled as new glass collet. 9.2 million tons, so the great majority of it was incinerated or landfilled, and ultimately it's all landfilled even after it's incinerated. Uh, so a tremendous volume of glass that has been mined, that has gone through the glass process, and then ultimately, sadly, um, not recovered. Uh, there are, uh, and, I, and I do envy you in this, Bertrand, there are not good statistics for flat glass recycling in the U.S. I think there's probably a lot of reasons for it. It's hard to judge when a window that's put into a house or building is ultimately disposed of. You know, so each year we may produce 10 million tons. How many of those tons each year at end of life? It's, it's challenging to know, but for this purpose, uh, after interviews in the industry and, and people that I think would have a good, uh, a good feel for what, you know, what they're consuming and what the rate is, uh, 2.5 million tons of flow glass produced in the US was recycled as glass call it. And that's not to say that that all goes back into flat glass, certainly doesn't. Uh, but of the, of the two and a half, 10 million tons, two and a half was recycled. A large portion of that is internal collet from the flow plant. So the reality of what we're actually recycling is a percentage is much lower. Um, and then seven and a half million tons was incinerated or landfilled. So to follow our train of thought, we have a potential feed source, uh, feed stock of seven and a half million tons of material that is ready to go back in the production. But the next step in the recycling chain asks, can we use it? Is it a viable solution to put that back in the manufacturing process? Uh, I think it's very unequivocally yes. Um, in fact, when you manufacture glass with raw materials, you're gonna use approximately 110 to 115 pounds of raw materials to produce 100 pounds of glass. There is fusion loss uh, and waste along the way. And so it takes 10 to 15% additional uh, tons of raw material to make uh, that ton of glass. When you're talking taking collet and using it as a substitute, you're talking a one-to-one -one substitution. So one ton of collet equals one ton of new glass. Uh, collet mel melts at a lower temperature, that's pretty well known. Uh, that equals less energy, less CO2. 10% of collet used in place of raw materials saves two or three percent of energy and five percent of CO2 emissions, which seems minimal. But if you think that we could take, uh, you know, up to a 50% recovery rate of call it into the process, that's an incredible amount of savings in both energy and CO2 emissions. And then additionally, because call it uh, doesn't require additional salt cake to uh, be processed, it's less corrosive and it melts at lower temperatures. So the furnace life is extended over using raw materials. As part of, uh, you know, as part of my research for this, uh, I have said there's very few statistics out there for flat glass in the U.S. So I personally reached out to um, three manufacturers in three major industries in the U.S. that consume uh, glass collet. And I was interested to see, one, are they interested in more glass collet? Two, do they have initiative in place to uh, receive that? And three, what's the most amount of collet you could possibly use in your melt process? Uh, we have the seven and a half million tons. We know it's a good substitute for, uh, you know, for virgin materials. So next question is, do we have a consumer? Uh, the first one I in, uh, interviewed was a company in the container industry. They create approximately 10 and a half million tons each year of, uh, of new jars and bottles. And just for perspective, the Hoover Dam is 6.6 .6 million tons. So you're talking almost one and a half times the weight of the Hoover Dam a large amount. Uh, the container industry currently uses between 30 and 35% glass collet uh, in this bottle mix. They have initiatives in place to increase that to 50% in the next eight years by 2030. And they can use 90 to 95% collet in place of raw materials in their process. So certainly a ton of opportunity for recycling collet into the container industry. The next one is uh, what we've already talked about, the flat glass industry. Uh, flat glass industry uses or makes 10 million tons of uh, glass each year. If you were to make that glass into a one foot thick uh, layer, which is the width of a four lane interstate, that would extend for 708 miles. It's a tremendous amount of glass. Now, flat glass manufacturers in the US, uh, from my discussions, were mixed on their interest in using collet. Um, most of them will use internal collet, of course, from their flow plants. 
Uh, some of them will use color that is captured from a fabricator, which is their float uh, glass and goes directly back to the float. And uh, almost none of them currently are interested in taking glass made by any other type of float plant. Uh, their primary concern is quality and chemistry. And when you add an unknown mixture to their float, it, uh, it can create some uncertainty. So uh, I do think there are challenges that can be overcome. They're being overcome in Europe. They can be overcome in the US. It's, uh, it will take some creativity on the part of float manufacturers. Um, lastly, we'll look at the fiberglass industry. The fiberglass industry creates about a, a million and a half tons per year of fiberglass, a big amount. That's the equivalent to three of the One World Trade Tower, which is actually the largest tower, largest building in North America. Now the fiberglass industry uses a lot of glass. Um, they can use flat glass. They use anywhere from 40 to 60% call it in their uh, glass mixture. They're actively searching for more and they can use up to 90% uh, total. If they, have, if they have the ability to receive that much color, they can use up to 90% in their process. So another very good source for uh, a, a use for glass call it. And ultimately it would be great if we could put all that back into new glass. However, in my mind, it's still a viable use if we're replacing raw materials in a product that will consume raw materials at any rate. So the fiberglass industry will consume raw materials if collet's not available. Um, the collet that we produce can be used in their process. I think it's for now a very viable way to recycle that collet and gain fertile life for it. So we've talked about the three ingredients. We have supply, we have quality, and we have a consumer. And uh, in the US, we have all three things, and yet we're seeing a glass recycling rate of less than 30%. So how do we improve that, particularly from a glass industry? First of all, I would like to challenge the fabricators and manufacturers in the industry to capture the waste we ourselves are producing. There is no more economical or viable way to increase our call it than by segregating waste at the, in the manufacturing and fabricating stream. We're touching glass once. If, it's, uh, if it fails for quality purposes or any other type of rejection, it's easy to segregate into its own container to be recycled. That's the, I think the first uh, encouragement I would like to give. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of glass that's currently being landfilled from the demolition and construction industry. I think that Realistically, we're looking at uh, somewhere between zero and 1%. I mean, there's, there's really no recycling that happens in retrofits and construction uh, in anything like that. I did not uh, put this in here. I would like to encourage, uh, especially companies that are the final step between the glass product and the end consumer to consider adding a recycling surcharge to the product. Um, now that's not unheard of. When I go to get my oil changed in my car, I pay a environmental fee to recycle the used oil. When I, uh, when I go to get new tires spun, another very good uh, application, they charge me to be able to take those tires and recycle them. Sometimes recycling costs more than landfilling, and I firmly believe consumers will be willing to pay the difference. Uh, studies show that in the US, consumers are 30% of all consumers would pay more for a product they consider to be environmentally sustainable. 72% would choose a product that they consider to be environmentally sustainable over a product that they uh, consider to be not, everything else being equal. So I think there is a real interest from the consumer level in looking at how they can help us recycle. The largest companies in the, in the industry really should hopefully be the ones that want to lead the way. Um, when they, they make the most glass, they create the most glass, call it, hence it, it sort of follows that they can be the ones to guide that glass, call it, to being recycled versus landfilled. It requires changes throughout the, uh, it, not, not big changes, it requires minor changes throughout the uh, fabricating process to where, you know, instead of putting all of the uh, waste glass into one bin, you need a separate bin, uh, a separate bin for the garbage and the waste glass, I'm sorry. And then lastly, I really uh, would like to stress the importance of logistics. In my world, logistics 
uh, are the difference between a product being viably recycled and a product being landfilled. Our highest costs in business are the cost to collect the product and the cost to ship the product to manufacture. So if we've got companies that have trucks, equipment that's on the road, for instance, delivering uh, new windows to a customer, if that same truck can be loaded with windows coming out from retrofit and brought back to the facility for recycling, we've found a very viable and low cost way to increase our recycling rate. I, I would uh, certainly encourage uh, people that own equipment or have logistics uh, departments in our industry to see how can we take what we're already doing and at very low cost enhance the recycling rate in the US. And then lastly, I think we need to look at landfills being the, the, the non-default option. Currently as it exists, it's, it's viewed as, okay, it goes in the container and then it, it goes to landfill. It's really what we do. Um, but if we look at this as a, a valuable resource that needs to be captured, let's first look at how, how can we recycle that resource? What can we do to pull that from the waste stream? And only after those options are exhausted, if landfill is the only other option, landfill uh, should be the last resort. It's a mind shift. We're certainly several years behind what we have uh, seen from our counterparts in Europe, but I do believe that we are certainly headed in that direction. And I've always thought that it's better to be proactive rather than regulated on the backside if we can't achieve that on our own. So I think um, I will wrap up with that. Thank you for your time and I'm sure we'll have some questions for you.